All right, I wanted to do some more complicated programming, and especially involving graphics. One thing in particular would be uh, doing these meters. Uh, but the meters, uh, there's a number of different parts to them, including the Fourier transform that does the spectrum analysis and also the pulling the data out of pulse. So let's start simple. Let's start with a clock. Here is a clock. Uh, it's very much the same idea as, reg as regard to how to display meters. And you see it's um, a little after 10 after 3. You can see the second hand, the hour hand, the minute hand, and various hash marks and the actual time of day there. I'll leave that up. Now, in the um, in the file that I will, um, or the directory I'll upload, um, there'll be uh, clock-bin, which is the executable, clock.c, which is the uh, which sets things up, creates the widgets, and so forth, starts off the main loop. Clock.h has got all the code in it. Um, or most of it. Uh, Compile.script is the uh, is the compilation which uses a minimum set of libraries, but you may want to check to make sure you've got all the libraries. Uh, this is GPL2 licensed. Um, Part1.glade is the Glade file. The Part1.glade with the squiggle is a backup file. Glade creates that. Part1.resource is created from resource.xml. It's created in the compile. Uh, there's a program there that uh, reads in resources, creates a C file. The C file is compiled and then is linked into your program. So your program has all of its files self-contained. Covered this in a previous video, but that's what's in there. All right, the um, the clock. Let's look at um, let's look at the at the Glade file for it. All right, there we are, and it's pretty simple. Um, all right, um, actually the window is only that size. Uh, there's only three parts. There's a window, which is called window. There's fixed container, which I called fixed one. And we get draw true, which is a, a drawing area. That's the drawing area. That's all you're really seeing. The only one that the only signal is this one here, uh, the draw signal. <coughs> so if the system wants to redraw your um, widget, it executes the draw signal, and that causes the function draw to on draw to underscore draw to be called. So that's the only signal. It's the drawing signal. Now, the if, if you resize the the window or do various things, the system will automatically do a redraw. Uh, but internally, because it's a clock, I want to I want to trigger a redraw that will happen uh, once a second. Yeah, it's just appropriate amount of time for a clock, and you'll see that. Okay, so you can see the clock up there. Um, let, look at clock. Dot C. There's not much interesting down here. There's a lot of includes. Some of these are useless. Um, the shared memory are no longer really needed. I don't know what's an STD bool. Um, there's a couple. There's more shared memory down there. But uh, there's a couple of them. The Fast Fourier Transform. I should get rid of that um, because you don't probably have that. All right. If you don't have some of these and it, it shows up that you and that it wants them, try deleting them because yeah, they were copied in from the uh, from the um, from the meters. Okay, so there's my widgets window, fixed one, draw one, and the builder. Uh, I, I declare the function draw to underscore draw. That's the one that's going to get called when the window gets to be uh, redrawn. And um, so we need to declare it. The color of the background is set up to be black. You can put any reasonable word in there and it'll attempt to parse it. Here is where clock.h is included, a pile of text, and then there's the main program. Main program initializes the GTK environment, um, gets the pointers to the various widgets, which are window up here, sets up the destroy signal, uh, calls a function on destroy when you kill the window, and on destroy just basically exits and kills the window. Uh, it's in GT, it's in clock.h. Uh, it connects the signals. There's only one signal, which is the draw draw signal, and gets the pointers to those various things. Unrefs the builder. I uh, don't need it anymore. If you want to make the clock always on top, uh, uncomment this. Show the window. Figure out the color. Uh, declare color. Try to parse it. If the parse doesn't work, make them black. Um, zero, 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 black. Um, okay, modify the background. In other words, paint your color. Um, set the title, which is the thing across the top of the screen here. A spark gap radio clock. What? Um, well, 1.0, that's where you set the title, the title bar. Now, if you're using a different theme, you may not see the color, title bar look quite like that, but it'll be up there. Set the timeout for the uh, timer. Here's where the timer is set up. The timer function is called clock timer handler out here. Clock timer handler. And you want it to trigger once a second. 
there's a couple of timer setting. This one sets in units of seconds. So every second, clock timer handler will be called. It's got no parameters. That's what the null means. Um, so once a second, it'll be called. And as long as that function returns true, it will be called again. If it returns false, the timer quits. Um, we're not going to return false, though. All right, and then we're off to the races. We start the main loop. Okay, and now we bring up um, clock.h. And it's got a bunch of redundant includes at the front here, some which you can get rid of. Um, declares the functions. Uh, declares second, minute, and hour. These are obviously important. These are the actual values that will use to be driving the clock. And a string into which the text of the time, as you can see there at the bottom of the clock, will be stored. These are called global. There's the on destroy function, which all it does is called GTK main quit, which kills the window. So it doesn't really do anything. Okay, here's the timer. All right, clock timer handler called once every thousand milliseconds or once a second. It's going to get the time. And getting the time involves the following steps. Uh, first of all, we're going to have a pointer to the structure TM. It's one of the time structures. It's a pointer, not initialized yet. We're going to get the value TX, which is a big number. Uh, we get it from the built-in function time. Null means we get the current time of day. Um, so we're going to get the time in it. And it's of type time 2, which I think is long, long. But anyway, uh, then we call the built-in function local time. And we pass to it the address of TX. We're not passing TX, we're passing the address of TX, ampersand X, TX. Uh, and it returns a pointer to an instance of the TM structure. What's the TM structure? It's a structure that's got all the parts of time in it. Um, so if I say, um, I, I did it a moment ago, so I didn't have to type it on. There it is there. It's, this is, I'm, I'm looking up local time. And this is where it is. And you can see the TM structure has got seconds, minutes, hours, month, day of month, uh, month of year, year, um, day of week, um, day of year, and whether you got daylight savings. Okay, and it explains them. They're all integers. Um, so it's just the manual function. It's a built-in function. So I get a pointer to that. <coughs> I get a pointer to that built that structure, which is in um, local time itself, and I'm going to use it. Well, first of all, I want to get the ASCII time. If you pass TOD to the built-in function ASCII time, you will get a string containing the time. Okay? And the uh, string, oddly enough, has an extra character at the end, which I think is a new line character. Well, I never really checked. It's junk, um, so I am chopping it off. I'm going to the length of the time string, minus one, dropping a zero on it, which basically kills the last character, which is, I think, a new line character. But whatever it is, I don't want it. It shows up on the screen as a garbage character. All right, so there's the time of day string. Now we want to pull out the parts. We want to pull out second, minute. Uh, since they're integers, but they're now being uh, converted to double precision floating point. Hour is a little different in that it's giving you a 24-hour clock, and we want to convert it to 12. And remember, uh, tm underscore hour is an integer, so I can say modulo 12 as an integer operation, and it gives me an integer, which is then promptly converted to a floating point. So the hours will go from 0 to 11. Um, and then uh, as part of the timer, so the, the, the timer handler finds the current time and uh, pulls these values out and then tells the system, by the way, would you draw, draw 2? So it queues into GTK the request to uh, invoke that function, to signal that function. And then we return true, which means we want to come back here. If we said false, that would be the last time we got called. Okay, um, so draw two is then down at the bottom. Um, uh, and I'll just go through it for a minute, but, um, it, it, but I'll get into the details later. Okay, when you get draw two, you will get the a pointer to the drawing area widget, which I actually don't use. But you also get something else. You get a pointer to the drawing surface, a Cairo drawing surface. CR is the pointer to the drawing surface. This I need. This is where I'm actually drawing to. Um, the drawing area contains the uh, Cairo drawing surface, but it is the CR that I'm going to uh, actually use. We set up some values here in that uh, we're going to need a horizontal and vertical, and they refer to the center of the clock, that yellow dot in the middle. The spindle in the center, that is the, um, which is the x and y coordinates um, of that dot in the drawing area. 
All right. Uh, the needle length. How long is this needle? You see, the seconds one is longer than the um, uh, the one for the hour. Um, so the the lengths will be different of the the meter radius is the outer circle of the of the um, of of the it's not really a meter it's a clock obviously and why I use the word meter I don't know but anyway it's the outer radius here it's um, longer than any of the needles and then the needle position well you see the needle position is kind of pointing to the uh, northwest as it's moving and now it's going to be pointing vertical. So it's going to be it's going to be a number that indicates how far around the circle the, the the needle should be pointing. Okay, that's what needle position is going to do. And there's my uh, horizontal and vertical, which I eyeballed. I didn't measure them in any sense, and they get put into H O R and V E R. I didn't really use them anywhere else, so I didn't really need to define them. The meter radius is going to be 50, which is the outer rim of the of the needle. And then it goes and calculates stuff. I, let's do these uh, later. But it calculates the information necessary for uh, for uh, for the uh, the first one here is for the uh, where to put the hour um, needle, and it calls needles. We'll get to the how we calculate in a minute. But first, of all, when it finishes calculating, it calls needles and it passes down information: the horizontal, the vertical, the needle length which is going to be 35, it's the shortest. The needle position, which is how far. That's what we got to figure out how it's calculating position. But I don't want to go there yet until we figure out what position actually means. Um, and the, um, the meter radius, which, uh, which is the outer edge of the, um, of, of the entire circle, which you notice was 50. And then 3, which tells us uh, which needle we're doing. In this, I, should, I could have made these as defined symbols, but 3 means we're doing the, uh, the hour. Um, right? Yeah, it's the hour. Okay, so needles gets called. And it will be called again down here um, when we're doing um, the, uh, what's the minutes. And it'll be called again down here when we're doing seconds. So needle is, needles is called three times. And then finally at the bottom here, we actually print out the text of the time. I say this, but we'll come back and look at how we calculate once we figure out what a needle really, uh, uh, how, the, how the positions are calculated. Here is needles. Here is the, there it is. Uh, here is needles. Here's the function that actually draws the meter or the uh, clock in this case. Should have used the word clock, but it was a meter at one time. Now it's a clock. And we pick up, we, it, we're passed down the pointer to the drawing surface, the horizontal and vertical um, um, pixel numbers for the center, uh, the net length of the needle, um, where the needle, the needle position, this mysterious needle position. That's the tricky part, the needle position. Uh, the meter radius, how big the needle is. Most of the time we don't use this in most calls. Well, it gets used in every call, I guess, but um, really only needs to be done once. And which needle we're doing, C flag. Okay. In here, it's got a bunch of stuff. It calculates a bunch of X and Y coordinates. These are going to be coordinates that are used to find the, uh, the, final, the point at the end of the needle. The center of the needle is always going to be hor and ver, H-O-R comma V-E-R. That's the center. Uh, we're going to need to calculate the end point of the needle, and that's going to be in one of these pairs of X comma Y or y, X1 comma Y1 and so forth. Um, that's in there from the original... Um, microphone meters and it, it, it created some kind it was some issue i don't know why it's there actually it probably shouldn't be it just adjusts the vertical by one pixel for some reason i put it in there don't know why all right let's stop right there and do this i'm removing those comments okay and this is an example uh, it just simply returns it, it, now needles will do nothing but this little example it won't show you a clock It'll just it'll just do this and return. It'll be called a bunch of times, but um, I'll write it out. I'll go over here and I'll kill the clock. I'll recompile, and I'll. Now you see it looks different. Now you see it looks funny. It's a purple arc with a white circle. How did that work? Because this is what we're going to do is to try to figure out how these arcs and everything work. First of all, is the color. Uh, the color is set from it's red, green, blue. And you set the color uh, onto the drawing surface, and it'll stay set until you unset it or change it to something else. So it's it'll stay this until you change the color. Um, the values run between zero and one. One being max, zero being nothing. So it's max red, max blue, no green. That's purple. Okay. So the color is being set to purple. Uh, we draw an arc. 
an arc well we're not actually drawing anything <coughs> we're calculating an arc we're drawing occurs in the next line we fill in the arc but this is calculating an arc relative to the center now the arc when we calculate this is the this is the distance from the center of the arc so it'll go out 50 pixels all right from where from horizontal and vertical the cr is the surface we're drawing it on so from the center hor comma ver will go out up to 50 pixels we're drawing an arc and we're going to start the left hand left hand most part of the arc is this number and the right hand most part of the arc is that number so when i look at this guy here what am i saying minus m pi is over here it's on the left most part it's pointing to the left as it were if there were an arrow here it'd be pointing to the left um, the second one here is the end of the arc it's over here all right this is the end of the arc so it is going to draw an arc from 50 pixels out from the uh, out from the center here all the way up and around and down to here now why don't i see anything behind because the white was driven on uh, drawn on top of it behind the white there is actually a purple half circle why is it a half circle? It's got to do, let me see if I bring that up there. Let me make it uh, always on top so it won't keep going, hiding behind. What, what these numbers are, this is, the, this is the starting point, this is the ending point. Everything is done in terms of pi. Um, M underscore pi is a built-in defined symbol for pi. 3.141519, who knows how many digits they carry it out to it's far more than would be visually obvious i was using three just plain old 3.14 for a long time and you couldn't see the difference by dropping the extra digits um anyway it's minus pi is pointing to the left zero is pointing to the right the the, the a full circle would be minus pi to pi a full circle is two pi around Half a circle is one pi. Two, <laughs> sounds like I'm giving a recipe. Um, so minus pi is fully to the left. Zero is fully to the right. And that's why you're seeing only a half a circle. So it's starting at the, at the left, arcing around uh, to, the, to the right. The next one here is the white. You can see it's 111 or RGB, so it's white. Now you see it's shorter. It only goes 40 pixels out from the center. Otherwise, everything's the same. 40, oh, yeah, obviously the uh, Cairo fill fills in the arc. I drew an arc, I filled it in, and then I stroked it, which makes it actually appear. Um, after you've done something, you stroke it so it's there, and then you move on and do something else. Um, so you see stroking a lot. Anyway, the, the next one is the white one. only goes 40 out. It starts at minus pi, and it goes all the way around through zero to plus pi. So this one here starts off at the left, goes up all the way around. Here's zero for it, but it comes all the way around the back again until it gets to plus pi. The idea is 2 pi r is the circumference of a circle. 2 pi is the circumference factor multiplied by the radius, and you, uh, you get the circumference. But, um, so that's where the 2 pi comes from. Minus pi is to the left, zero is to the right, plus 2 pi is back to the, uh, back to the left again but going through the bottom. So the negative numbers from negative mi uh, minus pi all the way up to zero are above the, sur is above the, uh, the center, and uh, from zero to, the, to plus pi is below. So that's what you're seeing there. And you're seeing then I fill it in, and it fills in on top of the, um, on top of the purple. Bingo, we've got the, uh, we've got the, um, the example. So I, I, I point this out because these numbers here, these minus pi, plus pi, are confusing. Especially sp speaking, since when we get to the clock, the leftmost thing is not zero. The leftmost the, the, the thing straight up is zero, right? I mean, high noon, this is zero up here for my clock. Uh, well, where would that be? Well, high noon would be, it would be halfway between pi, minus pi, and zero. So it'd be minus pi divided by two would be, so if I said from, if I wrote this thing here, uh, let me just do it and uh, prove me <laughs> things, of course. Um, uh, let's see, um, there's a truck going by, it's FedEx. Uh, get the windows open. Sorry, you'll hear them. Uh, they, do, they use very noisy diesels. Uh, 
Okay, I didn't mean to get out of that. Um, so I'll go back in here. Um, where is it again? There we go. So I'm going from minus pi to, whoops, I left out the minus. Um, where's my cursor? There it is there. Um, I should have been, had, it should be minus, of course, because that plus pi would have been all the way, it would be pointing downwards. Oh, come on. I need a new keyboard um, or better become a better typer. Okay, I wrote it out. I'm killing this. I'm recompiling it and I'm running it. You see, there's a half an arc. Uh, didn't quite fill in exactly as I wanted it to, but who cares? But anyway, you can see it starts here and ends up here. And the underlying portion is due to the weight. Let me get rid of the weight and. Um, uh, all sorts of weird things happen as, as how it shades things. Let me get rid of the white there. And um, okay, I can't see what I'm typing down here. Uh, yeah, compile. And yeah, there's there's half an arc. Uh, I didn't really fill in the bottom part here. Uh, if I'd gone further, it would have started to fill in. So it really just went from here to here, and the the, the arc actually was filled in as this part. If I go further. Um, Let's go a little bit further. Um, uh, let's see, what do we want to say? Um, instead of uh, that, we should say, uh, well, I can just put an absolute number in here. Uh, half of pi is 1.5, so let's just put 1.0 um, uh, minus 1.0. Um, this is how it does it. So minus 1.0, and I'll recompile. And you'll see I'm getting further and it's filling more in because it starts here, it goes to here, and only fills in the part that's in between. Okay, getting it to fill in this part here, it, there is a way of doing it. I've done it. It does it in the actual meters. But let's not go there right now because we um, uh, be, because that will get us off onto a different tangent. Whoops. Um, and I want to say, okay, so this is now commented out and that's gone. So now I go back over here. And, well, what I do here, oh, I left the return in, so I actually um, didn't do anything, sorry. Um, okay, clock's running. It takes a moment for the clock to initialize. It takes a full, it takes a first, the first second. You have to wait to the first tick before there's any, any information to be uh, mapped. All right, having said that, how do we actually how do we actually um, do this? First of all, the hash marks, they're blue, all right? Um, they're not actually blue, they're major blue. I mean, that's all full blue, but I've got halfway. Uh, they're not really blue, they're, uh, they're a lighter blue. They look a little purple on my screen. I don't know what they look on yours. My screen's kind of detuned, uh, so I don't know what, the colors may show up differently on yours. Set the width. What's the width gonna be? It's the width of the hash mark lines. Um, if that were a lower number, they'd be thin. If it's a bigger number, they'd be fat. So they're two and a half pixels wide. Everything's done in floating point. And now I've got this set up for 60 hash marks, or 60 clicks, although in reality, I'm only going to be putting uh, 12 marks up. There's only 12 purple or blue marks up there, but I'm going zero to 59, okay? And I'm only gonna put them up at five second intervals, okay? So it's I modulo 5. So it's going to be 0, 5, 10, okay? Where 0 is going to be presumably the top of the... Well, it starts actually on the left-hand side. In this case, I don't care about tops or bottoms. Um, but it's going to be... Uh, it's, you're going to divide the circle up into 12 uh, parts. All right. Um, and where we do it down here is in a line like this. I will explain it in a second. <coughs> um, this is the... Um, Let's see. Um, this is the. Uh, it says short has marks down there. That's wrong. I just noticed that. But anyway, it's uh, it starts at minus pi, and it goes to minus pi plus x. X is a positive number, so x is so it, at first x is zero, and it's going to be minus pi to minus pi. In other words, the full the one that's fully on the left, the left hand side horizontal right and pointing full left that's the first hash mark and that's where it's going to go how we're doing it will be another question the second one will be uh, minus pi to minus pi plus something so it's going to be a little 
greater than minus pi. Instead of being minus 3.14, it might be minus 3.0, okay? Because we're adding plus to a negative number. So uh, every time we, we come through here, that x is getting bigger, and we'll eventually go to, this will become zero, and then it'll become positive as we get on the bottom half, okay? So what's x, you ask? So you get the idea x is, you know, starts off at zero and increments. And when we finally get done, x will be equal to, guess what? m underscore pi It'll be equal to pi. What will that take us? Take us back to the beginning. Actually, we won't write the last one where we are back at the beginning because we're only going from zero to 59, and that would be the 60th position. But we come full circle, so to speak. Okay, now forget about that. That's the that's where the marks actually get written. Here's where x is updated. Okay, x starts up it's up at the top there. It's initialized to zero. Whereas x there it is up there. Uh, x is equal to zero. It's in the um, declaration and initialization. So we increment x each time by how much? Well, is sixty you say? <coughs> yes. And what would be the full rate of uh, the full circle? Two pi. Well, that would be 2 pi divided by 60. 2 times pi divided by 60. Why not go with pi divided by 30? Okay, same thing. Works out to the same increment. So they're 1 uh, so they're 30th of pi. Since the full circle is 2 pi, if they're 1 30th of pi, um, 60 of them or 59 of them will be a full circle. Okay, so that's where the x's are increment. Uh, th that's the amount of increment of x each time. Uh, since m pi is a constant and 30 is a constant, um, that is a constant. It's, compile, it's calculated at compile time. So so we're incrementing it by uh, 1 30th, um, where 30 actually is only a half a circle. So anyway, um, but we do it 60 times, so it'll actually increment a full circle. All right, now let's get back to the mystery of um, arcs and stuff. Okay, first of all, we draw an arc, horizontal, vertical, um, we're, we're drawing these hash marks, which you'll notice are out beyond any of the needles. They're beyond the edge of the needles. They're further out. So I take radius plus 10, um, the meter radius plus 10. Meter radius is the outer edge of the clock, and the hash marks extend beyond it. Plus 10. Okay? Get a, um, so it's meter radius plus 10. Meter radius is where, more or less where those little yellow dots are. Um, and uh, so we're going to go that plus 10. So the hash marks are going to stick out beyond the uh, needles, uh, the longest of the needles, which I think may or may not get exactly that point. But and and where we're going to put the hash mark, it's going to be at starting at you know starting at minus pi, then go to around the arc minus pi <coughs> plus x. So that tells me the go to. It hasn't drawn anything yet. It simply created an arc. Let's say it's gone from the start from here up to here. And so uh, we've got the arc there. What we do is we get the point. We get the c get current point returns me the x and y coordinates in the drawing area of this point right up here, the top, which is radius plus 10, of where the arc landed. Okay? This is Mount Arafat, where the arc landed. All right, so we, so it arced up here, just picking this one. And when I ask for get current point, it gives me the point in the arc. And you notice I'm passing down the addresses of x and y. So it fills in x and y. So I get x and y. I do it again. Same thing. But this time, the radius is only meter radius. It's not meter radius plus 10. So I'm going to get the point which is here, just below it. The first one was the top. This is the second one. Get it? I've got two points now, x1 and y1, which are this point on the arc, and x and y, which are the further points further out on the on this position of the arc. All right? And again, passing down addresses so it fills in the numbers themselves. Now we draw the hash mark. We want to now we say we're drawing a new path, starting everything over. Move to x and y. Well, if I move to x and y, I'm moving to this guy out here at the, at the end, the uh, top end of, a, of that hash mark, if that's the hash mark I'm drawing. All right. And then I want to draw a line from that xy to xy, x1, y1, 
Well, that's this one down here. So it draws that blue line from there to there. And then I stroke it. Now this will be true if it if 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 x is here and um, x1 y1 if x and y are here and x1 y1 are here, it'll draw a diagonal line, a slanted line, because it's drawing from the between these two points. So that's how I get them the, the uh, get get them to line up like that. And that's basically how it, a lot of it's going to work. So and then you know after I get the second coordinates, um, I draw a line from where I the move to takes you to a point. Line two takes you from that point to another point that draws a line from x y to x one y one. All right, so that's the sec that's the actual drawing of the line. When you stroke it, that paints it on the screen. And I do this. Actually, I'm only doing this twelve times, even though the loop is sixty. I left the loop at sixty because these guys down here, and I was fooling around with other intermediate hash marks. Which you can see the yellow dots are actually occurring at, 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 at uh, one sixtieth intervals. So there are the outer hash marks. All right, now we're actually going to draw the um, the little yellow dots. Uh, that's what the next one is here. I suppose I could have merged this into one loop, but anyway. First of all, we want to know uh, we're starting to draw the little yellow dots from the top. All right, which is one quarter the way around the circle. One quarter of a circle, generically speaking, is pi divided by 2. 2 pi is a full circle. Pi is half a circle. Uh, pi divided by 2 is a quarter of a circle. So I'm going to start here. So when this, these get drawn, they're going to start drawing at the top, and they're going to advance until you get up to the point where the second hand is. That's what we're doing. So we're basically all we're doing at this point is drawing these little, little yellow dots. Um, we set a color. Well, in this case, it's uh, it's only going to be um, yellow because the yellow uh, the dots, and I do check to see if it if, if so. If C flag equals one. This is circle thing. This was I am um, we didn't oh, we didn't just could have said this was yellow because inside of here because we know it. Okay, again sixty, um, and again we're incrementing it by um, by thirty. Excuse me, we're incrementing it by pi divided by thirty. Uh, again, as above, uh, 2 pi uh, divided by 60 would be um, 60 notches of a full circle. Um, pi divided by 30 is uh, 30 no notches on a half circle. The increment, in other words, will be you know 1 60th of a full circle, regardless, as we mentioned up above. All right, there's the same thing if um, i modulo 5. I mod if it is i modulo 5, in other words, if it's not... Uh, one of the places where there's a blue hash mark. The blue hash marks are at, um, not I modulo 5. And you notice on the yellow dots, there are no yellow dots uh, where there's a blue uh, hash mark. So, um, so all the intermediate positions where I modulo 5 is non-zero, we go in here. And there's this the thickness again. Um, again, the thickness could be just done once. Probably doesn't even need to be done at all because if we did it up above, we never changed it. But um, so move that back up there. It doesn't change the logic. Any. It only needs to be done once. Probably doesn't need to be done at all because we've actually did it up at the top and we never changed the width. Anyway, if you change the widths, you'd have to do that. All right, so it was done up above, um, so we don't have to worry about it. Now what we do here is uh, needle length. We get the, the center of the thing. We get the needle length. Um, so the needle length in the case of the yellow one or C flag one is the length of the uh, is the length of the second hand. So second hand length plus two. We're actually incrementing out a tiny bit. Uh, so plus two pixels. We're going a little bit beyond it, and we're starting at minus pi, and we're going to minus pi plus x. Well, x initially is half of pi. So if we start at minus pi over here on the left. You move this over here, minus pi on the left, and we go add to minus pi half of pi, that would take us to here. It's still minus pi plus x is this. Okay, it's halfway until you get to zero on the other side, right? So, um, so it's minus pi um, to minus pi plus x. That's the first. Well, it, it, actually, not the first first dots in incremental way. It won't be um, uh, pi divided by two. It'd be pi divided by two plus uh, pi divided by thirty. One of those, because we will have gone through here once. This will be actually a second time through the loop. 
there's where we get the point um and then we uh, we we get a point all right sam is up above we get the current point x and y which is at needle length plus two and then we get another point which is at needle length minus one so the points are pixel wise uh, three apart in length three apart in length this is the outer one this is the inner one uh, the arc is the same okay we get uh, the second point x1 y1 same as up above we're playing the same game uh, we're getting a, a outer point and an inner point uh, we're checking to see probably should have checked it up above because i don't need to have done all that is uh, if x has gotten bigger than the needle position needle position is where to draw the needle and and it's calculated in terms of pi okay and if i'm beyond where the needle is i'm not i shouldn't be drawing anything this should actually be above i'll just leave it here uh, but because no sense doing this calculation here because um if you're gonna if you're gonna break out here although it doesn't really cause any problem okay uh new path starting at x and y drawing to x1 y1 so that draws that tiny little line that's a yellow dot. it looks like a yellow dot but it's actually a three pixel line more or less three pixels since it's cal it, some of them are slanted and it's not going to be really three pixels it's only three pixels when it's vertical or horizontal uh, the others are uh, and actually uh, they're, they're drawn geometrically I figure it out um, and I stroke it so those are the yellow dots you see appearing and then I increment it by 1 60th of a full circle um, or 1 30th of a half circle same thing so those are the yellow dots now we get down here we're actually going to draw a needle now I don't care this is only yellow dots if you came in with one of the other needles you'd skip that you're right down here and we're back to the the length again uh, the width excuse me so I'll get rid of the width once is enough again if you want to change the widths <coughs> if you want to have different lines um, different sizes that's just where you do it uh, and you ch check it so again we're going to go we go to minus ply to minus pi plus needle position needle position is going to be zero all the way up to pi plus pi and so that tells us where around the circle um the the, uh, the arc has to be drawn needle position comes in from draw two okay it's calculated down there so we draw the arc to the correct place we get the point x and y um, we create a new path uh, we move to x and y and we draw from x and y well we move to x and y and we draw from there to the center horizontal and vertical get the point i think that's why the hor the ver up there was plus one because it looked a little awkward sometimes but i put a spindle on top of it too um, to, so you wouldn't see that it, it sometimes didn't align as, as neatly as you wanted to when it was doing angles i believe that's why that plus one was up there now i think of it okay um so what are we done we draw an arc to where the needle's end point should be starting to the, looking from the left all the way around coming back to the left is necessary uh, we get that point we start a new path we move to that point we draw a line from that point to the center of the circle and we stroke it bingo down here is the spindle uh, which is basically starting at the center four pixels out from pi minus pi to plus pi this is like that example up above with the white center uh, in full circle we draw the arc um we draw a line to um i don't know why that's there from um we draw a line oh this is supposed to be a central line inside the circle um, um yeah from the horizontal uh, to uh, vertical plus three uh, uh the vertical being the central part of the uh so it's it, 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 from the horizontal mark to a vertical mark up above and we fill it in, and that gives us a circle that will give us a circle there's some magic involved there and i forget what it is um uh, it, it fills in the entire circle uh by doing it uh, because it's going full circle around and it give it gave me some width to a lot of a line so when it filled it in i get that yellow large four pixel yellow dot in the middle anyway um so that is how we actually draw lines on the screen now when we get down here well, let's look at how we calculate these things this is where it gets um sufficiently um well it mentions up here don't mess with the original hour minutes and seconds 
because if uh, if the system redraws it between clock ticks and you've modified hours and minutes and seconds, it'll use those modified ones to redraw and you'll get some bizarre effects. So keep them untouched because if, if the system redraws it, it's not going to call the timer first to get the current time. It's going to use what values it's got. So don't, don't mess with those. Keep them clean. Um, zero, okay, for, in a clock, zero is straight up. That's what we want. Now, in, in terms of the hours, so if we get an hour, uh, let's say uh, we, we get um, the hour is zero. Well, that's midnight or straight up, right? So if the hour comes back from the from the timer saying the, the hour is zero, we want the hour hand pointing straight up. But zero to the hour hand actually means point straight left. That's not good. So we say hour plus three. So if the hour comes in as uh, whatever the hour is coming in, we add three to it. So if the hour comes in at zero, which means point straight left, adding three to it would mean point straight up, or it will when we finish doing all the calculations. So the hour has to be incremented by three in order to get the correct position on the on the actual graph. Okay, so if hour starts off at zero, it's telling us to point to the full left. We don't want that. We want point straight up. Straight up is plus three. It's going to be in hours. And then we add, hours the funny one because we add a fraction depending upon what the value of minute is. Uh, minute, if minute is zero, we add nothing. If minute is one minute before um, the hour, it's 59, 59 sixtieths, these are floating point values, will cause the hour instead of to be, say, uh, one o'clock, it'll be just almost up to two o'clock. It'll cause the hour hand to be advanced by an amount consistent with how far through the hour we are. So that that's the only time we do it, and you'll notice down there with uh, with minutes and so forth in terms of, of minute down here needle position is minute plus fifteen, because a zero minute would again point to the left, but there are um, sixty minutes in an hour, so a quarter of an hour is fifteen minutes. So we want to advance the needle fifteen minutes to get it pointing straight up if it's zero and any other value in between. But the hour is different because we add an extra factor to adjust it so it's so it'll start advancing towards the next hour. In, in, in the other ones there, you couldn't see it if you tried to anyway. Okay, so um, six hours per half circle marks, um, um, uh, uh, so, an, in, an, uh, so an hour times, there are, uh, per, per hour, Okay, six hours per half a circle. If half a circle, the upper circle is six hours. The bottom circle is another six hours. It's a 12-hour clock. Okay, so the top half, um, the hour um, markers are pi divided by six apart. So that's so it's in order to get six ticks on the top part or the bottom part, it's pi divided by six. So the, the hour times pi divided by six gives me the position um, it gives me the position of where to put this so I multiply the needle position which is the hour adjusted by three times that um, so that gives me the position in terms of pi of where to put the the needle in this case it's the hour needle needle hour is a, a little different because it's got that extra factor but um, whatever it should be, multiply it times pi divided by 6, and that'll advance you across the top of the arc. Well, um, so in other words, if the needle is, uh, if, uh, if hour is, uh, is 0, needle position will be 3. So it's 3 times pi divided by 6. Well, 3 times pi divided by 6 is going to be the pi over 2. And pi over 2, as we know, is... You know, if this is minus pi over here, this is minus pi, and this is zero, pi over two is right here. It's the center point. So, yeah, uh, so it does work. Needle length, it's the shortest one, it's 35. And we, uh, we call it, um, and we call it with the needle length, needle uh, position, um, um, and the that doesn't change. Needle position is how, you know, is the angle. And then three indicates the color. It's the one that comes up green. And again, we go down to minutes. Now, minutes and uh, an hour are go going to be 60 clicks. So um, 
So we take the minute, uh, th a minute value, the minute value, and add 15 to it to compensate for the fact that the gra the circle in the computer is actually starting pointing full left. We want to start it pointing full upright. Um, so it's plus 15. And then uh, the needle position, uh, which is minute uh, plus 15, we now um, see I've pulled minute out and I'm using a different number. So I don't, I was good. originally I did this by modifying minute itself and that didn't work, believe me. Well, it works, but anytime it gets a redraw triggered by the system, it, it, the meter spins around weirdly. All right, try it if you want. It's not pleasant. Anyway, so again, it's. Uh, the, the number of positions is, well, in this case, it, it, half a circle is 1 30th of pi. Full circle is uh, 1 60th of 2 pi. So pi divided by 30 is the same as 2 pi divided by 60. Um, so uh, that's going to be the increment. So each tick, 1, 2, 3, 4, until we get up to 59, is going to be times this distance pi divided by 30 and that gives me the angle for the um, for the both the uh, in this case it's the minute but you'll see the uh, second one is down is done the same right underneath it it's identical the length is 45 I call it and I pass it down a color number of two which indicates it's going to be it's going to be red and then we finally get down to the seconds again we ac compensate by 15 seconds it's again the same number of uh, increments around the circle same as before, and so forth, we do it. And finally, we show the text at the bottom. The text at the bottom here is, um, uh, we move to, and that was done by a, a trial and error to find out uh, where it was. It's, it's uh, horizontal, vertical. So it's 40 across and 150 down. Um, and then uh, we copy the text into it. Um, we, well, we tell it what text to show and we stroke it and that causes the text to appear. And there are functions where you can change. That's, um, that should be, oops, uh, can. Uh, you can change the font and um, you can do all, you obviously can change color. If you don't like yellow. Um, and it uses the last color it was, it was playing with, which of course was yellow because it drew the, um, uh, the second hand last. That's why the second hand, when it passes over something else, obscures what it's passing over. So there you are. Uh, there is a meter. Now, with this basic concept, of course, you can now make audio meters. And But I'd want to do something a little simpler so it might, uh, you know, because all of these metering where it starts negative and goes positive is, um, is a, bit of a, a bit of an issue. All right, we'll stop it there.